So far, we've had a look at how to use the Mask Prompter plugin in After Effects, which uses AI to automatically detect the person and remove the background. However, for this video, I'm going to show you all how to use the Rotor Brush anyway, because let's say that you don't have the Mask Prompter plugin or you want to use the default feature in After Effects. Now, once you've got yourself the latest version of After Effects, which is 2024, you want to get yourself the video imported into your timeline. And once you've got yourself the video, we're just going to double left click on here to open up the Rotor Brush settings at the bottom. Now, in order to use the Rotor Brush 3.0, you need to go over to the Stickman right here with the brush. You want to hold it in and then get yourself the Rotor Brush at the top. Straight away, you're going to notice if you're working on a 4K project, then the brush is going to be absolutely tiny. What you can do is you can hold Control or Command and then left click and drag this out to expand the brush size. This is just going to make it easier for you to visually see the actual brush. And once you've got yourself a decent size where you can actually see it, all you need to do now is paint on the positive of what you want it to select. And in this case, I want it to select this person right here. You want to get yourself a rough selection. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more accurate it is, the better it will be for the selection. Now, sometimes it may go outside of the person, which is completely fine. It is normal. Now with the minus, we're just going to zoom in so we can actually see the image better. And what you want to do is you want to hold Alt, left click, you can let go of Alt and then just deselect this area. You may need to do this a few times until it detects the person's edges and the selection is a lot better. You want to make the very first reference frame the best because it will use it as a reference frame throughout your frames. Now, when it comes to the hair, what we can do is we can use the second tool, which is the edge refinement tool. You just want to left click, hold it in and get yourself the second tool, which will allow you to paint onto here and refine the hair. Now, same as last time, you can use control and left click to increase the brush size. And you just want to go around the edges of the hair. And there we go. We're going to subtract it from here. And there we go. Once you're happy with your selection and everything is looking great, you can also have a look at the different previews at the bottom by clicking these buttons right here. And it will show you what it's going to look like with the normal overlay with a background. And if you wanted to see the actual preview of what it's going to look like, you just want to toggle this off. And this is what it's going to look like without the background. You just want to make sure that the transparency mode is enabled. Now, once you're happy with your outline and your first reference frame, all you need to do now is go down to the freeze frame right here. You just want to left click on here and this will start to process the rest of the frames as well. And then once it's finished processing, all we need to do now is unfreeze this right here. And then this will start to update the frames. And if we have a look at this without the preview, you can see it has removed the background throughout the whole video. And honestly, by the preview, it's actually done a really good job on maintaining the quality and the details on the edges. It's even done the hair and made it really high quality. Now from here, if you want to, of course, you can go back onto your comp one and this is the final result. If you wanted to add yourself another background, all you need to do is simply drag and drop it onto your project. We're going to move this one underneath and we're just going to reposition this. You can press S for scale and then just set this to, let's say 50%. We might zoom out a little bit more. And then we can also change the scale of the subject as well, or the person. Let's say about 70%. 
We're going to change the position. And of course, from here, if you want to, you can add yourself the shadows, make it look more realistic. You can also do the color correction because right now you can tell the lighting is completely different, but you can always apply yourself some brightness and contrast onto the person and just drag it over the top. We can get ourselves a hue and saturation. And if we have a look at this, now if you wanted to, let's say that you had some edges where you can still see some of the background, like here for example, you can always go back and use the edge refinement tool right here. And you would then double left click on here, go back into this window and just continue applying the refine edge brush tool. You've also got yourself some settings over to the left side, such as the feather, the contrast. If you wanted, let's say, a sharpness of zero, which will make it even sharper. You've got the contrast, which if you start to increase or decrease this, is going to change the edges and how rough they're going to look. You've got yourself the shift edge, which will allow you to go further in and then just cut those edges even more. And if you wanted to, for whatever reason, go back to the previous versions, you can switch the version in here to 2.0 or 1.0. But that's pretty much it. That is how you use Rotobrush 3.0 in After Effects. You may also like this next After Effects tutorial up on the screen. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next video.